Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about Planet 9. Now we still haven't found it, but we are going to be talking about a hypothetical concept of it existing out there and we're going to try to imagine what it actually has possibly orbiting around it. Anyway, welcome to What The Mad. So before we actually take a look at Planet 9 and try to simulate it in Universe Sandbox Square, let's actually discuss the scientific concept that we're going to be using to try to see what might be orbiting around it and if it's actually something that might help us find it. First of all, this is where it's located in comparison to the Sun and all of the other objects. Uh, as of now, we think maybe, just maybe, it is at a distance of about, uh, where is the semi-major axis? There it is, about 700 astronomical units away from uh, the sun with a relatively high eccentricity of 0.6. Now, if I remove the eccentricity, uh, it's obviously going to be a little bit closer, but we're going to use this value of um, 700 astronomical units to basically try to um, estimate what it might have in orbit around it. Now, how are we going to discover this and basically why are we even bothering with this? Well, there is a very unusual property of planetary bodies that's called Hill Sphere. I've talked about this previously, but just in case you haven't watched the previous videos, I'm going to zoom in to Earth and kind of help you imagine what Earth's Hill Sphere looks like. So what exactly is Hill Sphere? So let me try to demonstrate using our own moon. Basically, it's in a volume or um, a sphere around our own planet or really any planet where you can place a stable moon and it will basically orbit there without um, running away without becoming part of the larger solar system. At some point it will become part of the larger solar system but in, within this area it will still be inside the Earth's or really any planetary orbit. For every planet, for every distance, it's sort of different. There's actually a formula that helps you calculate this, and today I'm going to briefly show it to you. Uh, but for Earth, it's about 1.5 million kilometers, or 0.01 astronomical units. For every object, it's going to be different. Uh, the highest heliosphere for known objects is that of Neptune. Uh, you can check out some of the other previous videos if you want to learn more about it. But uh, the heliosphere calculator which is actually right here, shows you the formula. It's mass of small object divided by three masses of the sun, uh, third root, and multiplied by the same major axis, which is A. Now, I've already did a very brief pre-calculation, but it's actually using a slightly different value. But uh, for 10 masses of Earth, which is what we think uh, the planet 9 might be in terms of mass, and for mass of the sun at distance of 700 astronomical units, the Hill Sphere here is 15 astronomical units. Now that is ridiculously high. Let me let me show you what this means. This means that okay, first of all, let's imagine how far away 15 astronomical units is. There's the sun. We're gonna take Titan. Uh, there is 15 astronomical units right around here somewhere. It's between Uranus and Saturn. What this implies is that Planet 9 can potentially have a moon system th of this distance. In other words, in a distance of about 15 astronomical units, anything that gets within this area will get captured by Planet 9 and become, very likely become, its, its own moon. Now, this has a huge implication. Uh, what exactly is the implication? Well, the implication is that this object right here, um, also known as Planet 9, might potentially... Oh, it's really dark. I can't really see anything. Let's see if we can change the solar illumination to make it a little bit brighter. All right, that's a little bit better. I changed the sun to look brighter and produce a lot more luminosity just so we can see it a little bit better. So anyway, so this object right here might actually have its own system of um, objects around it that would be tremendously large, potentially looking a little bit more like an actual uh, miniature star system. At the same time, uh, these objects, these planets, uh, oh no, okay, not planets, these moons orbiting around it, we're gonna just randomly generate a few of them in this region, might actually help us discover this object a lot faster. How? Well, if we actually find within a certain distance, within basically about 13, to 15 astronomical units 
a bunch of like rocks flying around for no reason whatsoever that don't seem to fit the pattern of other objects in our uh, own uh, solar system, we know that we just discovered a potential location for Planet Nine. Because there's probably a lot of these rocks here. If Planet Nine does exist uh, in you know millions and billions of years of its orbit, there is a very high chance that things uh, passed by within about 15 astronomical units. Big things, small things, things that would basically would be easily capturable. And here you can see that even at like four, three, two astronomical units, you can easily place um, an object in orbit and it will still be in a very stable orbit around it. Uh, so this means that detecting objects that have a very unusual orbit around Planet Nine uh, might help us and might lead us to uh, its discovery. We might be able to discover it much, much sooner. Now here I created a kind of a randomly generated, um, not randomly generated, but basically randomly placed uh, system where you have a bunch of moons orbiting around it. And so here, if we look at the approximate area where it might, uh, might be, might be located, it might be orbiting, and we see an object that seems to be moving in a f peculiar way, kind of like f sort of flying away from us, but maybe um, not really moving in a direction where we expect it to move, we could maybe potentially extrapolate the central region of its orbit, and then this is maybe just maybe where Planet Nine would be. Now, this is obviously kind of a theoretical speculation, and this is something that we haven't really uh, been able to test yet, but just the fact that Planet Nine is capable of maintaining moons at a distance of up to 15 astronomical units is actually something that we really need to consider when looking for it. Uh, whether we find something or not is another question, but if we do find an object that seems to be orbiting peculiarly around some imaginary point somewhere out there at a distance of maybe 5 or even 10 astronomical units from uh, something, looking at the center, we might actually be able to discover the elusive planet 9 that's obviously right there. So this is something that we might be able to use in the next few years to try to study uh, and locate the elusive planet, but for now, just a very interesting concept to explore. So if planet 9 is out there, there's a very, very, very high chance that it has a miniature world system around it. I don't want to say planetary system because these are not technically planets, but basically a miniature world around it with lots and lots of small moons in all kinds of different orbits. Now, they're not all going to be in the same plane, of course. As a matter of fact, most of them, if not all of them, will have completely uh, different planes of orbit. Let's actually just place some more here. And this is probably what it, you know, it looks like. It's all very random, very unpredictable. But it is definitely there as long as the planet 9 is there, because at a distance of 13 astronomical units, uh, up to 15 astronomical units, that is, it is very, very capable of capturing quite a lot of moons and keeping them for themselves instead of letting uh, Sun take them all. So this right here might actually be the face of unusual system of planet 9, uh, and it might be something that we discover in the future. A lot of these rocks are definitely going to be there as long as Planet Nine is there. For now, though, that's all we know and that's all we're going to talk about. So in other words, there's like a miniature system within our own solar system somewhere out there. Hopefully we discover it one day. Anyway, come back tomorrow to learn something else and hopefully you learned something from this video and now you know a little bit more about Planet Nine and about Hill Sphere and how Planet Nine, if it exists, has the highest Hill Sphere uh, all of them all in our own solar system. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.